Good Friday afternoon, everybody. It is the 11th of February. We are um, having a very interesting set of days and weeks and months that have passed, and we've got days of interest in coming up ahead. But this uh, broadcast is actually done out of sequence. This is the David Martin News Hour, not Wednesday. For those of you wondering if I missed the day, um, it is. It is in fact Friday. It's not Wednesday, and I'm doing this show because of a situation that unfolded just a few days ago. And I just want to share it with you. And it has to do with a statement that I made several months ago about the Canadian government and and why the Canadian government seems to be taking what appears to be a rather undemocratic and, and unusual stance with respect to what's going on um, in Ottawa and around the country. And, and now, obviously, things that are appearing to unfold here in the United States. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to take a moment to make something abundantly clear about a statement that I made several, several months ago and documents that I've shared as many as a year and a half ago. But the reason I wanted to do it was to put it into context for all of you. Um, I had a very interesting email exchange. And the email exchange started... Um, Earlier this week, it started on on Tuesday, I believe it was, and it came from a young lady at the Associated Press. Um, the Associated Press person is a woman named Ali Swenson. And before I go too far into this story, I want to make abundantly clear that I have spent a lot of time trying to understand Ali and what she's about. I've tried to understand her work. I'm actually quite pleased to find out that there's a lot of things about Allie that seem to be just wonderful people. She's cared for people who are in need. She's cared for people who are, you know, homeless and and children who are being uh, greatly, you know, subjected to unfortunate circumstances. There's a lot about Allie that just seems like a really great person, which is part of the reason why I wanted to understand the email that I received. And I'm going to go ahead and share this with you so that you can actually start seeing what gave rise to this story. <clears throat> I received the email from Allie, which you see ahead of you now on your screen. I'm hoping to reach out to David Martin. Now, that's an interesting thing. Um, reaching out to me is a pretty easy thing. She's a reporter with the Associated Press. And we'll put an asterisk next to that because it turns out um, that's a very dubious term to put on, on the opening. Um, which, you know, requested a comment for, from, from the, um, for a story she was working on. And, and so what was fascinating was what she said next. Clips of a presentation Martin gave are circulating widely on social media, repeating his claim that the Canadian government gets a kickback from each of the Pfizer and Moderna shot that's administered. And, and the next line is the part that triggered this show. The companies in question and the prime minister's office have confirmed to us that that's not true. Now, put a pin in this one, put a pin in this one, because this one is, in fact, exceptionally, exceptionally important. Because when we meet Allie, which we're going to meet in this show, when we meet Allie, her commitment is to making sure that if there is a fact that is false, it is her job to make sure that that fact is corrected. And I'll tell you what, Allie has lit up the fact-checking universe with fact checks that are wrong. So let's remember that the companies in question, that's Moderna and Pfizer, and that's the prime minister's office, confirm to us that that's not true. Just put a pin in that, because here we go. A little later, I sent her a bunch of information where on Wednesday the 9th, she followed up and, and I sent her financial statements. I sent her a whole bunch of documents where she could find the information directly and opined in a couple of my emails that it was unfortunate that she was not reading source material. She was, in fact, leaning on the companies and Trudeau's office to confirm or deny what was being said. And then <clears throat> what we have is an interesting email that came to me on the 9th of February which was, I read your work here, and here is a hyperlink to an article from Common Ground Canada, which is attributed to me, but I have never written. So the fact that she said she read my work is actually a false statement because she didn't read my work. She read somebody's op-ed about what I said. By the way, the op-ed was pretty much what I said, so that's fine. 
But when she attributed it to me, I thought that was kind of fascinating because it's actually not correct. And right here, she says, I am not seeing how that proves your claim that the Canadian government is profiting off of the injections. Can you provide direct evidence? Okay, that the Canadian government's making a kickback. And then we have our deadline for this is tomorrow, Thursday noon Eastern. So for those of you counting days, that was yesterday at noon Eastern. And the reason why I'm pointing this out is because Allie states that she is committed to truth, she is committed to facts, and she is committed to the evidence that is so critical so that the Associated Press pretends to have the standing of an objective journalistic outlet. So let's review for the facts. She called the criminals to ask if they were committing crimes, which is a wonderful way to do fact checking. And then she reviewed some stuff. And she, in fact, does kind of allude to the fact that there's technology from Canadian companies that make things work. But she still can't read any of the evidence that I provided her several days earlier to prove the claim that Canadian government is profiting off of these things. And remember, she said that she had a deadline of yesterday at noon, because clearly this was an important story that had to be reported on by yesterday at noon. Now, let's just review some facts. And this is the facts that I sent back. On the 9th of April 2020, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said, normality as it was before will not come back full on until we get an injection for this, referring to the alleged pandemic. With no evidence that this kind of injection has ever been successful since Pfizer's first coronavirus spike protein injection patented in 1990, this statement made by Trudeau was unfounded. What he didn't tell Canada or the world was that Canada controlled the mRNA injection platform and was going to be enriched by both Moderna and Pfizer's partnership with BioNTech. And that is because, by the way, there are two companies, Arbutus Pharmaceuticals and Acuitas Pharmaceuticals, the owners of the lipid nanoparticle licensed to both Moderna and Pfizer's BioNTech. Um, they own it. And so the reason why I said that they would benefit from it is because they own the technology. He already knew that the gene therapy being promoted as an injection was an economic win for Canada. And therefore, Trudeau's Canada had the monopoly on the world's adoption of mRNA gene therapy shots. He was not promoting science. He was promoting the Canadian economic interest in the gene therapy illegally promoted as this injection. He is not going to back down on the mandate, which is the thing that everybody's talking about right now, because he's running an illegal monopoly. And then I said he's a criminal, not a concerned leader. Now, the reason I'm saying these things is they all are factual. And the reason why that's important is to realize that this is the evidence. And by the way, I mean, there will be people who say that this doesn't meet community standards because it goes against community standards. The, the bottom line is this is their publication. It's not mine. This is the 10K filings of Arbutus and the copious, copious litigation between Arbutus and Acuitus, which states, and I don't know how you missed this one if you're Ali Swenson, the alleged amazing, 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 amazing researcher who's done such great fact finding to destroy every sinister plot to mislead the world. Ali can't read this sentence, apparently, because she has had access to it and has chosen not to read it. University of British Columbia, certain early work on lipid nanoparticle delivery systems and related inventions was undertaken at the University of British Columbia, UBC. These inventions are licensed to us by... UBC under a license agreement. Now, <clears throat> the reason why I said Canada is going to get paid for every injection is because they are going to get paid for every injection. That's why I said it. And if you look at the Arbutus 10K filings, if you look at the Acuitous public statements, if you look at any documentation around the litigation that went back and forth between Arbutus and Acuitus, if you go back and look at any of the litigation that went around between Moderna and these guys, because Moderna tried to get their patents invalidated so that they wouldn't have to pay the license and they failed so that they do have to pay the license. 
100% of the facts are abundantly clear. Canada gets a check every single time either Pfizer or Moderna sells a product. That is not my allegation. That is a securities filing with the United States Securities and Exchange Commission. Now, I guess we should put a caveat. These companies may be lying in securities filings, which would mean these companies would be committing felony violations of securities laws. And that may be the case. But I'm going to go out on a limb and make it abundantly clear that Justin Trudeau is maintaining an illegal monopoly. Justin Trudeau is not interested in the safety and security of the citizens of Canada or the United States. And by the way, the Biden administration has no business commenting on the peaceful protests of democracy loving people to suggest that they should be suppressed somehow by government action or by force. Because it turns out this is, in fact, a crime being committed by the prime minister of Canada. And there is no justification in any civilized society ever. No justification for a prime minister using the police or using the military to cover his crime. Clear on that? Good. Now, Ali Swenson. Who is Ali Swenson? Well, I wanted to find out from Twitter and from LinkedIn who this person was. It turns out she graduated from Columbia University. She works for the Associated Press. If you go back and look, she's actually had an interesting, very short-term series of employments, the Associated Press and what she's doing is tracking down and correcting false information. This is a challenge to Allie. You sent me in your opening email false information. You sent me information that was self-reported cover-ups of crimes from both pharmaceutical companies and from the Trudeau government. And if, in fact, your commitment, as you state professionally, is to track down and correct false information, then it is incumbent on you to publish what I'm saying right now. You had the opportunity yesterday, and I waited for 24 hours to make sure that you had the first shot at doing the right thing, but you didn't. And by the way, I've looked, and I've looked very closely to see if you did do the right thing, and you haven't. But let's look at some more of Allie's great career. She was an associate producer for the Center for Public Integrity. And if you look at what the Center for Public Integrity is about, you find a very interesting story because I happen to bother to look at the Center for Public Integrity. By the way, for those of you wondering who is the arbiter of integrity, let's go through who they are. The estate of Stephen Gary Hoffman, the Good Words Foundation, the Park Foundation, Fred Stanback, the Tides Foundation, Wellspring Philanthropic Fund, and the Wincoat Foundation, and then Park Adams and Paula Scheller Adams and George and Harawati Alvarez Correa and Annie Casey and Anonymous Renaissance Foundation and Anonymous Rockefeller Fa Philanthropy. You get the point. There are a bunch of people who, not surprisingly, are deeply associated with trying to change the narrative only in one direction. And what makes that interesting is if we go back and look at the Wayback Machine, yes, yes, I did that. You go back and look at the Wayback Machine and you say, well, who used to support them? And it turns out people like the Johns Hopkins School of Public Health, Ethics and Excellence in Journalism, Everett Philanthropic Fund. What you see here is a very interesting story. And this is where, as a fact checker, I thought it'd be really cool for us to encourage Allie to fact check Allie because it's a good idea for us to say, hey, Allie, we're not upset with the fact that you're potentially misleading the public. We're not because I'm not upset with that. A lot of people mislead the public. What I'm interested in is I'm interested in why it is that you have the printed evidence of the lie 
from both of the pharmaceutical companies and from the Trudeau government. I just don't understand why if you're committed to truth and if you're committed to integrity, I can't understand why you told me that on the 10th, okay, on the 10th, which was yesterday at noon, you were going to run a story. Well, Allie, you got the facts. You got the facts of who was lying because the lies were two pharmaceutical companies and the Trudeau government. You got those facts from yours truly. And I decided to just take a look and see, did I miss something? Maybe she did publish this. Maybe I just didn't look. So I decided to go on to Muckrack because it's a great place to get the consolidation. And lo and behold, last publication, Facebook fo post falsely attributed to Ca Canadian Prime Minister nine days ago, Ali Swenson. 15 days ago, Wisconsin Assembly. 16 days ago, Ali Swenson. And lo and behold, I couldn't find anything there. So I decided, hey, Dave, maybe you're looking at the wrong place. Why don't you actually look somewhere else? Because obviously, Allie wouldn't ever, ever deny the public the interest of making sure that somehow or another, people who tell misstatements and falsehoods are held to account. So I decided maybe I got it wrong. Maybe I should go to the Twitter account for the Associated Press because they're fact-checking accountability, journalism, and misinformation coverage, I figured that I should look there. And lo and behold, look, February 9th is the last time AP Fact Check posted a thing on their Twitter account. And by the way, they lied in that. They lied about the Center for Disease Control and Prevention changing the definition. Now, the good news is they lied in public, which is it's great. The best news is they lied by once again calling the CDC and asking the CDC if they did something that was in fact wrong. Now, when the thing being done is wrong by the person who is doing the wrong thing, it is not a fact check to go and fact check the thing done by the person doing the crime, doing the problem. It turns out if Ali or anybody at AP Fact Check went back and read the 1986 Act, which is the federal law, that stipulates what these things are supposed to be and what they're supposed to be able to do, you'll find out that the CDC's alleged change of a definition is in fact nothing more than the CDC's alleged change of a definition. But you'll notice that Allie told me that at noon yesterday, she was going to publish the evidence on the misdoings and the misdeeds of me. But it turns out that when the misdeeds are not a person bringing the public the facts, when the misdeeds are the companies and the misdeeds are a prime minister who is running a criminal monopoly, when those are the misdeeds, apparently, Ali doesn't feel any need to publish the truth. And that is why this video which I am sure is going to somehow be construed as a violation of community standards. And here it is. Listen, listen carefully. Facebook, YouTube, everybody else who actually goes about this, I can assure you that you are suppressing information and participating in a criminal conspiracy if you say that any of these things are anything other than facts. If it is not legitimate for a person to call out the lies of fact checkers with evidence of the lies, then this is not about community standards and freaking stop hiding behind your little fig leaf and admit your naked lie. This is not about the public. This is about propaganda. Now, why do I care about this? I care about this because in court right now, Judges are considering whether or not the people standing for their freedom in Ottawa are going to be subjected to newly minted regulations and laws that are going to make their actions allegedly illegal. Newsflash. You courts are currently on notice because you haven't ruled yet, and it is time for you to listen to the facts. The facts are Trudeau hid his financial interest when he stated what he did in April of 2020. He hid those interests from you. He hid those interests from truckers. He hid those interests 
from um, the Canadians, and he hid those interests from the world. You have the evidence. Any decision you make where you have ruled in face of the evidence of his crime is meaning you are a participant in that crime. And ultimately, we the people will hold people accountable. And that starts with the leadership like Trudeau, but it goes all the way down to Ali Swenson because, Ali, I was decent. You interrupted my life. You interrupted my week asking for information. And in respect, I gave it to you. But you do not have the decency and the courage when it's the prime minister of Canada and when it is the companies that are injecting people, you do not have the courage to hold the possibility that maybe they should have facts checked. You're not a fact checker. You're a propagandist. That's what's going on right now. And you have a chance right now on the 11th, a day after your publication, to fact check this video. Because it turns out my facts are not calling the criminals to ask whether or not they did the crime. My facts are the criminals' own admissions. People, it's Friday. I'm burnt up about this. And there is no question that I probably crossed a line somebody is going to have a problem with. But I do not care. Humanity is at stake. It is time that we put this message in front of everybody. And I can guarantee you, you're not going to hear this on Joe Rogan. You're not going to hear this on Tucker Carlson. You're not going to hear this on any of the mainstream outlets because they are unwilling to actually face the criminal issues that are at stake. But that's about to change. And the good news is because of this week, it's going to change in some ways they never saw coming. So, welcome to your weekend. And share this so it does not have a chance to get stopped. If you are not sharing this video in every platform you have, and I mean Rumble, I mean BitChute, I mean your, 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 you know, God knows, Signal, Telegram, whatever. If you're not sharing it, you actually don't value patriotism and you don't value humanity and you don't value the law and you don't value integrity the way I do. So there you go. That's your show. And I hope somewhere along the line, one or two of you actually makes this the thing that is the shot heard around the world. Thanks, everybody, and have a great weekend.